Okay, so we've figured out now how pressure varies with depth in a fluid. We've also talked about how to calculate the force on a submerged planar surface. Let's talk about how to calculate the force on a curved surface as well. Now the first thing I have to do is define what I mean by this curved surface. It has to curve into or out of the water, kind of like a cylindrical or a spherical tank. Um, we've talked about planar surfaces that can also have curves to them, but if it's if it's in the direction of the surface, if it's like a, a flat, a round door, like a manhole cover, that has curvature to it, but it's not in the direction of the fluid. Okay, so a manhole cover would be solved just like a planar surface, but something that actually curves into or out of the water, you need to solve with a different technique. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach what the book has what our textbook talks about. It's a simple method and it's actually not very versatile. There's much more complex ways to do this using calculus. Um, but this is sufficient for our class. We're going to solve by performing a force balance on the fluid enclosed by the surface. And that's all there is to it. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this by example, but there's really not much more to talk about other than that statement. So think about that. We have to find the, the fluid that's enclosed by the surface and then just perform a force balance on it. So let's look at this example where we've got this goofy curved gate at the bottom of a tank. You can see it's, it's on a hinge and we want to find the force on that gate and the magnitude and direction of that force. Um, if we expand this and look at the fluid enclosed by the gate and the gate itself, it's not curved enough to completely wrap around a section of fluid, but we can extend where the fluid, the fluid that is actually contained by that curve. And it turns out to be to look kind of like a, a quarter of a cylinder, so it's a cylinder cut into quarters. And if we perform a force balance on that fluid, there's three obvious forces that act on it. First is the weight of the water, Next is the hydrostatic forces that act both on that the side of that flat surface and that top flat surface. Then finally we have the reaction forces which we're solving for and we're going to solve for them for it in a horizontal and vertical component and it's acting this is the force of the gate pushing on the water which is equal and opposite to the force of the water pushing on the gate. So by solving for these, we can determine the total, the resultant force on the gate. All right, the um, hydrostatic forces on the planar surfaces we just finished talking about, and we're going to use our formula, gamma HCA. Um, the real trick here is keeping track of the geometry. So for F1, we use gamma for water, and HC is the distance from the centroid of that flat plate to the water surface. And if you can visualize where that flat plate is, it turns out it's four meters from there to the top of the water. And then the area of that surface is two meters times four meters, which is eight square meters. The second surface is similar. It's the same surface area, but the centroid is a little bit deeper. If you look at it, it's four meters to get from the water surface to kind of the center of curvature, and then it's another meter to get down to the centroid of that object. So HC is five meters in this case, a little bit higher than the previous one. The weight of an object is just gamma times its volume, and the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the length, and then this is only a quarter cylinder, so it's one quarter of that. So we have those forces. We can now do a force balance to solve for the two components. It's some forces in the x direction. And there's only two. So the horizontal component has to equal F2. In the vertical direction, there's three forces. So the vertical component uh, has to equal the sum of F1 plus the weight. And now we've got our components. Um, we could then do there's a, a number of different ways we can find out where it acts. You can um, sum moments around the hinge, for example, but that's a lot of work. 
Um, I'm going to use two tricks, or one trick. Uh, the pressure always, we know that the pressure always acts perpendicular to the surface. So since this is a curve, we know the force must pass through the center of curvature. And we can use that to locate the force. And then we've got the two components. So using the components, we can find the total force and direction. So we've got one force acting in the x direction, one force acting in the vertical direction. Our resultant force is that red arrow, which combines the two and um, the angle at which it acts. So we can use basic trigonometry to solve this using Pythagorean's theorem and um, tangent. And we come up with a total force of 587 kilonewtons and an angle of 48 degrees.